This is the Master Lock 178, and this is the wrong passcode. Just gonna make sure we're on numbers here. Wrong passcode. This lock is normally released. I know the passcode is one, two, three, four. This lock is normally released by pushing on the shackle and then releasing it. It will not catch while the correct code is entered. So we're just gonna scramble it here. Wrong code, and then the shackle will close. This is to demonstrate a uh, sort of a, not a decoding mechanism. Uh, unlike some of the old master lock combination padlocks, uh, this can be decoded, but it's a lot more difficult. We're gonna use this uh, Peterson mini knife tool which I've already mangled pretty badly, so we'll see how it works, if at all. But we're gonna use this Peterson mini knife tool to attempt to bypass the lock, because what's happening inside is at the top of this metal body, if you hold the lock so that the numbers are right side up, then at the top of the body right here, there's a sort of a latch, it's this triangular latch that um, is sort of shaped like this. It's a little bit offset to this side. So the catch for the latch is right here. And so we want to reach up through the key or through the, um, the, the dial sort of gap here with a very small knife tool like the Peterson mini knife tool. We're going to reach in through there and we're going to attempt to trip that latch. <clears throat> and before we do that, just so I can explain what I'm going to do as I do it here. Before we're about to attempt to trip the latch by forcing the tool up in through the left side of the second number wheel. Um, before we do that, we are going to apply a little bit of pressure to the, um, to the uh, shackle, just to relieve some of the friction on what the latch is catching on. So we're gonna apply just a little bit of pressure. We're not gonna push it down hard because that would just apply friction from the other direction. So we're gonna apply just, just a little bit of pressure. We're just gonna ease off. We're not gonna push it all the way in, just ease off. And first we go in, and you want to go in through the top here, or through the um, top of the left side of the second key or uh, number wheel. And so if you, and you want to make sure you're holding it so the numbers are right way up, and that's how you're going to identify the top left of the second wheel. And a lot of these knife tools will have kind of a, kind of a curve to them. Right at the end, they'll be tapered a little bit. And I found it works both ways. Um, if you go in with the taper on the bottom, as it were, uh, I find that's a little bit more difficult to get in, but I also get better results when tripping the actual latch on the inside. If you listen here, you can hear if I if I'm not quite in deep enough, you can hear it kind of slipping by. So this I haven't got it here, right? Too much movement, too much freedom of movement there. Here we go, and here I've got it, I think. Oh no, I'm just brushing up against it. So a little bit deeper there, and then. Here we go, and I've got it. So now, if I try to push up on it, I've got a lot of resistance here. Oops. If I just try to push up on it here, with no pressure on the shackle, a lot of resistance. But if I add some pressure to the shackle, then suddenly it's a lot easier to apply that pressure. You can hear the spring flex. You hear that? That's the spring. And then, there we go. Now, if I don't put pressure on the shackle, oh, you can hear it, but it's a lot harder. And it doesn't quite get me where I need to be, so I gotta have the pressure on the shackle first. Now, not, not full pressure. Again, we don't wanna push hard on the shackle. We just wanna give it just enough pressure I don't know how well you can tell here, but this is too much. I'm holding the shackle down 
So I'm actually applying force not just to the spring that pushes the shackle up. Um, let me show you what the shackle uh, latches look like. If I can open this up again. There we go. So you see on the shackle, we've got two kind of triangular cutouts there. And in each of those cutouts, there's a sort of a two triangular things, uh, two separate pieces of metal that are being pushed in opposite directions into those, into those um, cutouts. And they're being pushed that way by uh, a spring on either side of a mechanism, which when uh, there's a plate here, there's a plate right here, it's triangular, um, and it's a little bit offset, so it's kind of connects right here. And when that plate is pressed up, that releases these two triangles that are being pushed out this way, it releases them so they're pulled back in. And then the pressure on the shackle pushes it right up. The pressure on the shackle that's pushing it upwards also means that the bottom of these two cutouts is being pressed against the triangles that are pressing into them, right? So you've got friction there. So by applying a little bit of force to the shackle, I can kind of demonstrate this way. So this force is too much, but this amount of force is just what you want. Obviously you can't feel how hard I'm pressing, but you can see I can push it further, right? So if you're at the limit of how hard you can push the shackle down, you're pushing too hard. So you wanna push it down just enough so there's no friction between these little cutouts and the things that are being pressed into them. So let's try that one more time. I think my knife tool might still be mostly in position. So I'm gonna apply just a little bit of pressure and I do that by holding my thumb here and my fingers here. And then I can kind of push down on the body of the lock into the shackle. I could push it down more if I wanted, but I'm not doing that. I'm also not letting it up all the way, just a bit of pressure. And you can hear it disengage, disengaged, re-engaged, but the other way. And by engaged, I mean there's friction. You wanna get rid of that friction because your knife tool, if it's thin enough to get in there, which it ought to be, and this uh, Peterson mini knife tool is what I'm using. There are obviously others that make similar knife tools or decoder tools. Sometimes decoders are a little bit thicker. Uh, I like the Peterson mini knife tool, but it's very flexible. You can see I've got some bends in there. It's all dinged up. But anyway, if it's very thin. You can get it in to the code wheel. And remember, you wanna be on the left side as you're facing upwards, right? So the keys are right side up. You wanna be on the left side of the second code wheel. Cause remember I said that triangular shaped thing is a little bit offset to the left. So that's why you wanna be right there. Now it puts you very close to the center, but a little bit off from center. And that's because the code wheels are actually offset to the right. So you're a little bit left sort of net as a result of that. We're gonna release the pressure on the shackle. I'm gonna reach in there, feel around, and I can feel some resistance from the spring. And I just heard the spring tweak a little bit, so I think I've got it now. We'll see, and I do. And when I say we'll see, what I did was I just released the pressure that I was putting on the shackle to see if it would push itself out. I'm not pulling it out because it, it's, it's sort of default state energetically is out because there's a spring pushing it up. So if I've, released that little plate. Sorry, our video cut off there. Um, so if I release that little plate, then the shackle is actually gonna push itself out. I don't need to put any pressure on it to pull it out. That spring is gonna do the work for me. So all that I'm doing here is I'm, you know, undoing the work of that spring in terms of the friction. Then I'm removing those th things that are holding the shackle in place and then releasing it so that spring can do its job. Let's see, one more time. I'm gonna take the knife tool out and try and get it vaguely straight. I mean, that's, that's close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we're gonna go in mostly straight, maybe a little bit down at first just to get it in there and we're gonna feel around. Now I'm applying pressure to the shackle. And there I, th I think I've got the plate, and I do. I don't know if you can hear that uh, 
spring. Right? Now if I if I'm out of position, you can feel it or you can hear it and feel it. I can feel it, but you can hear it pressing against the plate. But I've got no spring. There's no give there. It's just hitting the plate. Which is a little hard to tell because you will get some flex out of your tool if it's sufficiently thin. So you're looking for the spring flex, not the tool flex. So don't apply too much pressure. I don't think I'm... No, nope, maybe I am in position here. Yep, I am. Now if I pull out a bit, I'm just free moving in here. That's not where I want to be. And here I'm bound up against something. It's not where I want to be. Pressure the shackle. That's where I want to be. And then we're good there. I'm going to pull it out so you can see how far in I am. So I'm right about there. Just about half, half the length of the taper after the taper. So if you have the same tool as I do, you can kind of measure it that way. You can also see it's right about there. If you compare it to the width of your lock, you can see about how far in I was. And we're going to go in again. Not applying pressure to the shackle yet. I'm going to straighten this out a little bit. Not applying pressure to the shackle yet because I'm not in position and I don't want my hand to get all tired. And if your hand gets tired or numb, you're not able to feel how much pressure you're putting on the shackle and you'll end up putting too much on. So now that I'm pretty close to position, and by the way, let me let me walk you through getting in here. If you go in this way, you're gonna hit a sort of a wall here that isn't where you wanna be. Now you might, with enough force, you might be able to actually release it from here, but I don't, I don't think so. Um, actually, I don't think this is part of the plate at all. I think it's the, the, the housing around here that I'm bound up against. So you don't wanna go up too high you don't want to try to go down too low because that's not going to get you where you want to be. So you don't want to go necessarily right up into the top of the key wheel hole or the uh, code wheel hole. You want to try to get in in such a way that, there you go, you get it in and then you just slide it right on by. And you can start at a little bit more of an extreme angle up or down just to get it in. But then once you're in, you want to make sure that you can move it in and out pretty cleanly. You, you should have a fair amount of room if you're in the right position. Then you're just trying to get it in the right amount. And you're feeling for that release. There it is. And there was a bit of an audible click there. I think that click was just because I was sliding past another piece of metal. And then I hit the release latch and then I pushed it up. This isn't like lock picking. You won't normally get a click. There are no pins in here. So just kind of ignore that click. That was probably poor form on my part. There. Again, I can feel and I can hear the spring. And so I know I'm in the right position. And just to be clear, like I can't just open it that way. Here we go. So I'm gonna take it out a bit, slide it back in. So you can see me kind of searching for the thing. Oh, that was a little, that was a little too easy. I'll go all the way out. If I was to go in this way, just so you know, on the right side of the second wheel from the left, I don't think if you have a if you if you get really flexible with your knife tool, you might be able to get into the right position, but I don't know if there's a shroud on this side of the code wheel or not. Um but I haven't been able to actually get the tool into position from that side. There we go. Now, if you come in at this angle, you'll find that your tool hits up against the this, this housing here. And that's okay. You can actually use that at first. If your angle is just right, you can use that to kind of guide you in a little bit. There you go. I'm applying pressure to the shackle. And then... In. All right, so that is the master lock, sort of code wheel lock 178. And this is the, the newer model. I think it's the newest version of this model of 
master code wheel lock. Um, it's a, it's, I mean, it's pretty well made overall, to be honest. It took me a while to get the hang of this, probably like 15, 20 attempts before I found the right positioning for this tool and I found the release latch. If I had another one of these that I could like drill out and take apart, I might have had an easier time with it being able to see the inner mechanisms, but I enjoy learning by feel. If you're a new or aspiring lock picker or lock bypasser, you might enjoy, um, you know, looking up some tutorials or something online for your specific locks, but I find it's, it's really best to get to know a lock really intimately before you start looking up what its insides look like. And that way, when you look it up, first of all, I think it helps you remember a little bit better what, what you were feeling, right? So if you, if you have an intimate knowledge of the feeling on the inside of a lock, I think you'll be more likely to remember what you learn when you look it up. You'll go, oh, right, that's what I was feeling. That's what I was bumping up against with this tool. Or, or you know, maybe you learn about, you know, this lock sometimes uses security pins. And so you're, you're like, ah, oh, that's why it was binding up and really hard to, to pick. And I was maybe getting stuck in a false set and that this can be why and so on. So it's... Uh, I think it's a great learning tool to start out just getting to know a lock. These practice locks are okay for that because you can kind of do both at the same time. You can see and feel your way around. And if you're brand new, that's an okay way to start to learn what the sort of feelings of pins setting and not setting are. So you're kind of getting to know the feelings um, what does a pin feel like versus what does the housing feel like? What does the space between the pins feel like? And you can really see what you're doing in there so you're not guessing. So even if you don't correctly set the pin, um, you're, you're still able to tell the difference between like, am I actually manipulating a pin in here or am I just wiggling my, my lockpick tool, my, you know, whatever tool you have. So something to consider. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you like my stuff, subscribe. I sometimes do lock picking videos, sometimes I do lock bypassing videos, sometimes I just do demonstrations, sometimes I do tutorials. Um, a lot of the time I'll also do virtual reality gaming um, streams and videos and such. Uh, you'll see a few of those. If you care about any of that stuff, subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know what you like and what you don't like, and uh, thanks for watching.